Hey, this is Nick, and today we're talking about builder trend templates, and specifically how this super powerful feature can really help you to systematize your entire business for building out complex projects. If you're not using this feature, you absolutely need to watch this video. To me, this is probably the most important feature within Builder Trend. If you haven't watched our previous videos on it, go and do that. Those kind of set the scene for it. But let's dive in to Builder Trend templates. I want to show you how very powerful these are. So BT templates empower us to build out our schedule. We talked about in previous videos how the schedule is kind of the hub of the entire system, right? And if we can build out a template that attaches to that schedule, we can do so much. We can save ourselves so much time when it comes to project setup and establishing a level of consistency. So we get our schedule, selections, to-dos, and checklists is the big one. Okay, a lot of folks out there are asking, like, how do we do a rough electrical checklist? How do I do a framing checklist, drywall checklist? I do it with to-dos. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. B POs and bills, you know, taking this to an advanced level, starting to build out your cash flow management, that's awesome. Bid packages, and of course, folder organization as well. We're gonna talk about all of that today. I'm gonna to show you some examples of this. Now, this is really important. Okay, I want you to know that templates are, in my opinion, the secret sauce to builder trend. The software is amazing, it can do so much. But what happens is because it can do so much, we potentially can get overwhelmed with building out every single project. The schedule, the selections, the to-dos, it's a lot of work. But Builder Trend has smartly made the templates very, very robust. And so if we establish and then build upon our templates, we are really reducing the headache that goes into setting up a new project and we're building out the consistency, just it grows and grows over time. It's so amazing to do and to see and you know after your first, second, third, 10th project, you have a really good system in place and the software is not a burden to use. It really starts to turn, you turn the corner and it's really amazing for you and your business. So let's get into Builder Trend. I wanna show you what we're talking about with templates. Now we're gonna use this um, Central Park job here and we have this schedule um, that we've been playing with. Now what I wanna do, you know, I built this all from scratch. You saw me do that in my previous videos. What I eventually wanna do is I wanna delete this thing and I wanna pull it in from a template. But to do that, I wanted to build this out first because you can use an existing project to create your templates. And that's a really good way to get started. Eventually you're going to want to just update your templates, but if you haven't played around with templates yet, you probably shouldn't. You should do like one project, just get it in there, build it out. It's a little uh, manual and tedious process, but build it out and then, start building your templates, okay? Now I'm gonna show here, I display a bunch of templates. I only use one and I'm going to encourage you to kind of get to that point, okay? So initially when we set things up, we're like, here's an addition project, here's a kitchen, here's a bathroom, they're a little bit different. And we built out different templates for each. But what we found was that we'd update, let's say the rough electrical checklist on one and we'd have to upload, update it in the other. And it was becoming a little weird because it's like, hey, that checklist is kind of the same for each of these projects. And even if there's something that's not relevant, I can just delete it. So what we've decided to do is we go to just this master project template. I still have these here, probably gonna delete them eventually, but they're here. I'm gonna use this master project template. If you don't have any templates, you can do a new template and you're gonna wanna do it um, from a job, okay? And that would be a fine way to kind of get started. So here's my templates right here um, from a template. So you can create a template from a template, um, but probably the better way, I think the way to do it from a project would be take a job or a project and within this, by the way, contract type, this is new. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that there. And then you can see it right here, I can copy this to a template if I wanted to, okay? Now I'm not gonna do that because I have my master ready to go, but I can copy this to a template, it's gonna ask me what I wanna call it, and then I can work on it. All right, but I'm not gonna do that, I kinda have one started that's gonna be better to demo demonstrate with. So this master project template. Now this, what's cool about the way that Builder Trend does this is it acts almost just like an actual job. There's a few things that aren't there that aren't relevant, but what I love about it is it's actually got dates in it, okay? so. I go to the schedule and you can see this is a built out robust schedule, right? There's a lot of cool stuff going on in it. There's a lot of dependencies. We spent a lot of time kind of building this out. Now it is not going to be applicable to every job, but what we want to have in there is like all the tasks created so that we can just delete them. And it like reminds us, hey, do we need to, in this case, uh, do we need to do a culvert? Okay, we probably don't need to do a culvert on every house that we build. But if I don't have it here, I won't necessarily be triggered to think if we need to do it or not. So this helps us. We build it into the template, we can easily delete. Notice the other thing you see is a lot of placeholder stuff. And so you're gonna see this with a lot of what I do. 
is when it comes to assignees, if you are the type of builder or remodeler who is maybe putting things out to bid or we're using different contractors for different jobs, we're not always locking in the same person, use placeholders and there's a really cool auto reassign feature that we can use as well. But it all starts with a schedule. So I want you to build out a templatized schedule, understanding that not every single job is the same, but um, you can build this out and then delete from there. And the important thing is when we establish the schedule, we establish that anchor point, we can then start tying things to it. All right, so a prime example of that, I think we have this, let's check out my rough electrical. And actually, no, it's not, let's see. Oh, electrical walkthrough, here it is. Okay, so we have an electrical walkthrough that's based on that we have um, a to-do related to it. Okay, schedule electrical walkthrough. And so you can see everything will start tying to this template. So if we create a new project, we create this schedule, and it's going to automatically then create the related to-dos and other items as well. I'm going to show you that in a second. All right, so let's go to exactly that. Oh, I'm in, yeah, I'm in the template. Okay, so I'm going to go to my to-dos. Now, these are all templatized. Do I need to do every single one of these to-dos on every single project? No, absolutely not. But I might, right? I might need to do that. And if we are thinking that we might need to do it, we might as well put it on our list, and therefore we can then mark it off. The other thing we want to do is we want to create checklists within this system here. Okay, so this is going to be all the stuff that we might need to do. And this builds over time. Your initial list in a template is not going to be that big. But what I want you to do is as you work through a project and you're like, hey, we probably should have had a checklist for pre drywall punch, right? We should, probably should have done that. And maybe you build it out for that project you're thinking about and then bring it into the template. Okay, so let me find one that would make a lot of sense for this. Uh, let's go pre demo prep. Um, I think we got an electrical one, let me just see. Uh, let's see here. Electrical subcontractor. There's a pre-demo prep checklist. Here's an example one, all right? So we're getting ready to demo, and we've realized that you know, getting into projects, here's a bunch of stuff that we got to kind of think about. Like, what are we salvaging? What are we trashing? Are they tagged? Um, is the floor protected with RAM board? Are we protecting dust prone areas? These are all the things that we like sometimes do anecdotally. We decided to make a checklist so that we as a team can look at this before we demo. All right, and you're gonna do the same thing for, you know, electrical, for plumbing, for all those different checklists that you might need to do, all right? So definitely, check that out and build these out. Let me check out some of these. I think we have some framing ones. Let's see, schedule framing inspection. Okay, here's like a, an electrical specifications one. We just started building this out. Like here's the stuff that the electrician is gonna start asking for, right? We probably wanna add some appliances to this. It's like, again, every single time that they ask, we're gonna provide that list. Let's build it into a template so we can maybe proactively do it. So build out your to-dos, link these to-dos, okay, to a schedule item. That's going to be the most important part about templating is that every single one of these items that we do should be linked to the schedule. So that when the schedule moves or when we establish our start date, the to-dos are gonna pick that up, okay? So we have to-dos, absolutely want to do those. Selections, we can save ourselves a ton of time here. The other thing that we used to do with selections is we used to only provide a selection if we were providing an allowance for an item. We don't always provide allowances. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. We just transition to say, let's put every single selection that we find needs to be made on a job into the selections within Builder Trend, even if we don't have an allowance for it, because it gives ourselves a place to put the answer. So even if we have, let's say, a designer or the customers picking out things themselves, okay, paint colors maybe are picked by a designer, but can't we have a place to hold it? And if we create all these things ahead of time, as you're gonna see when I bring in the template, uh, we're gonna save ourselves a ton of time. Not only do we have the selection, but even choices. So if we have like in our spec that we always use SWP Promar flat paint, we can build that in and you know confirm that. And then maybe maybe there's a time on an actual project where a customer's like, hey, I wanna use Ben Moore for that, whatever, we can add that choice, okay? Uh, for Windows, okay, we are often giving our customers some options of Anderson 400, Marvin Elevator, Pella Lifestyle. That's kind of our baseline wood window. We're typically doing wood windows. That's kind of middle of the road. They're not apples to apples for sure, but they're kind of close. And so within each of these, we have you know links to the product page. This is all work that we don't need to do twice. 
And then when we get the quote, we will put in the actual cost of everything. All right, this is awesome. It saves us a lot of time. It makes you look really, really professional as well. Appliances, what are we picking for this stuff? Now, appliances is one that almost always is selected and paid for the customer or the designer in our experience, but I still need to put the specs in here to provide to the electrician and to the plumber. All right, so building all this up, this takes a lot of time, right? But you're not gonna do this all on the first go. You're gonna notice too, as you go, you're gonna start getting more detailed. So when it gets to like the tile, okay, shower niche, this is not something we've always had, but now we have, you know, different sizes of niches right? Um, grout, we can add in here. So we're just adding complexity and adding detail to it, all building in with the schedule. Some of these items might not be applicable. We can easily delete them after we bring them into our job, all right? Definitely use uh, to-dos, selection specifications. I'm usually copying and pasting those from a, um, from a proposal, but you could potentially have those as well. And we'll talk about the file hierarchy. So I think that having a standardized folder hierarchy is a good idea. It might not mirror exactly what we're doing here, but this is typically what we do. We have an internal folder. We have a client shared folder that just the client can see with us. And then we have an architect designer folder that both the uh, owner and subs and vendors can see that as well. So we build out that structure and then we're going to upload some docs into there as part of our builder trend setup process. Another thing you can do is you can set up some invoices. Now we've kind of gotten away from this a little bit as we've gotten into a little bit more cost plus, but if you have some kind of standardized invoicing schedule, go ahead and create these, link them to your schedule item, it saves you a ton of time. You, know, you can just put in the unit cost and then the quantity is gonna update. Now the other thing that you can do and you should do is build out POs. Now I'm gonna have a deep dive on this on how I do this and how I help to manage my cash flow but create placeholder purchase orders, okay? We know that almost every single job we're gonna have to pay for electric and plumbing and hardwood and drywall and a ton more things that we should probably put in here, right? You can see that I have my, most of my vendors are also a, um, a placeholder there. Build this out and then this will again help you with, okay, what bills am I gonna have to pay on this project? We already got them here, we just need to then fill them out. I'm gonna show you that on a separate video, how I have these templatized POs. I um, do a bid approve the bid, and then I update the PO with the pricing from the bid, okay? And you can do your bid packages as well. You can do all this stuff. It's really, really helpful, okay? Not really much to do with uh, messaging there, okay? I'm gonna say focus on schedule, to-dos, and selections with a secondary focus on documents and purchase orders, okay? So let's see this in action with that project that we had, we were messing around with. Again, don't think of like, oh, well, I do my template differently. Everybody's gonna do their template differently, absolutely. Now we can talk about, should we do this, should we do that, should we have a checklist, should we use it to do? Absolutely, bring those questions. But I don't want you to see this and say, oh, I'm gonna set up a little different, I'm not gonna use templates. You use templates the way that it makes a lot of sense for you. So what I'm gonna do is I have that schedule already, right? I'm gonna delete it, okay? Now I spend a lot of time building that out, for sure, but I have my template, so I'm gonna select all of these and I'm gonna delete all of these items. Now, everything that's related to these is gonna um, not have a dependency now, okay? Um, so here I can um, add from my schedule. Now, it looks like Builder Trend has started doing um, some recommended templates, which is awesome, love that. I haven't looked into those yet. I'm going to do it with my own templates. Now, to kind of clean this up, I've deleted the schedule items. I also wanna delete the to-dos if I have any. So I'm just gonna select all of those. I'm gonna delete. I don't really want it to get muddled up. Same thing with selections, let's see what I have. I don't know how much, yep, just plumbing fixtures. Let's delete those as well. And financials, I don't think I have any POs. Let's just check. Yeah, pretty much blank. So this project, there's not much that has happened. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, well, we can do it a few different ways and probably the best way would be to go to my schedule and go to import from templates, okay? I'm gonna choose my template here, master project template. Now, because I'm in the schedule zone, that's where it's absolutely going to have me import, but I wanna select these other things as well. I'm gonna select the start date, and this is just, we can always change this, but this is, you know, when is this thing gonna start? Let's put in a date. I want the to-dos to come in, I want the selections, I want the document folders, the video folders, these files could be helpful, I forget what's in there, but those are good for like, if you have a builder trend tutorial or like welcome to our company type file, that's really good. Let's bring in the invoices, the packages, the purchase orders as well, all right? All that, let's import that. 
So what we're doing, you can see 91 items on the to-do, 62 selections, 71 schedule items. We spent a lot of time building that out. And this is why I like to have just one template. I'd rather have more in one single template. You saw how easy it was for me, me to delete. We can then filter and delete if we need to. We have a bunch of our placeholders here. Um, we'll add those to jobs, update permissions, great. And now I should have a schedule. Look at that, right? So I went from nothing to this awesome schedule with to-dos linked to it, right? And because everything is dependency driven, I can take this schedule and I can say, hey, this project doesn't start till next year. Okay, so production start starts next year. Let's just go ahead and do that. Just do, do this. And now my entire thing, to-dos, POs, invoices, everything, because we're linked to the schedule, is going to update. Now I'm in 2025, when are these to-dos due? They're not due until you know 100 days before, 90 days before, et cetera. And we can take this now, and we're not gonna start this project for a long time, but when we bring it up, we have all this work already done for us. Our documents are ready to go as well. Now this isn't gonna be ready to go 100%. There's really specific things for each job, for sure, but this gets us 90% of the way and it saves us so much time. I think on top of it saving us time, it's consistency of process. It's whenever we come into a document folder within any project, we know it's gonna be relatively consistent. We know that we have to-dos that are relatively consistent. We have um, you know, tags that we can filter on as well, right? I can filter on these tags and say like, hey, what are my setup tasks, okay? Or designer's a good one. I don't know if I have any for a designer. Yeah, a couple. So. And we do that with selections. That's a good one too for selections. Like, hey, what do I need the designer for? The designer might say like, what are some important dates for me? Or what are some important to do's for me? You can filter on designer. It's so, so powerful. All right. So check out templates. I want to hear your thoughts, your questions, your concerns. I want to know how you've used templates as well. Of course, the way that I do it is in no way, shape, or form perfect, nor the only way to do it but it is really, really powerful. All right, check out the other videos we have in this series and definitely subscribe so that you get updates. We have some awesome products becoming available as well, some free stuff, some online courses, all that to make sure that you can get absolutely everything you ever need out of Builder Trend. All right, I look forward to your questions and comments and I look forward to creating more videos on this. I'll see you on the next video.